When was the last time you took a leap of faith, trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth, or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. All right. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. It has been a busy day today, back to back to back recordings. And I and my heart is full because my, my brain is full with all the knowledge I've been receiving from all these amazing guests. You can always um, guarantee to have great guests on this show for me to share with you their business nuggets for you to change the way you've been doing things so that you can get a different result. And and many of you might be in corporate America or looking to start up a side hustle. And our, our guest of today's show, Mary Scott, she is a startup success genius. So we're going to be jumping into a lot about startup successes, uh, tips and tricks and things that you can do to get started now. Um, and this is one of my favorite subjects. As you all know, I'm a business coach. I work with a lot of uh, female entrepreneurs on scaling their businesses, um, launching their businesses. So I love, love, love this topic today. And I can't wait to get started. But before we do, I do want to thank our uh, sponsor for today's show, Phoenix Drone Pros. At Phoenix Drone Pros, we love what we do and are passionate about each and every drone photography and video shoot. We've been in business since 2017, our talent and skills show in the video production we deliver. We offer fast service for commercial real estate, movies, events, construction site monitoring, and we also provide drone virtual tours that are all the rage right now. These virtual tours are great for team building and entertainment. Contact us today at Phoenix Drone Pros pros.com to schedule your shoot online or to get more information. We capture everything. Little Birdie told me they're getting ready to franchise. How exciting that will be. Phoenix Drone Pros will be everywhere soon. So that's really exciting. I love franchising because I come from that world. All right. Mary Scott is an award-winning videographer from New York, currently working in St. Louis. And if you're watching her video over at Colleen Biggs on Facebook, you'll see um, that she's definitely in St. Louis from what she has behind her. As a business concierge and consultant, um, she is a team organizer for One Million Cups and is previously a recruiter for the House of Genius. She has compiled the St. Louis Startup Resources Guide so that both resources and startup would have where each other is. Her mission is for startup businesses to be wildly successful. It's all of our like goal, don't you think, Mary? <laughs> for oh, sure. yes. <laughs> I want startups to be wildly successful. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They don't have to start off like these slow trains anymore, right? Where it's like, you're not going to see any profit for three years in your business. I'm going to tell you right now, the way my husband and I run all of our businesses, and we have several of them, is we do profit first. We take profit right off out of our business in the very beginning. And I know there's a lot of coaches out there that tell you reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. I'm going to say, you got to pay your bills. You got to eat, right? So we take profit right away out of our businesses. But I'll tell you, it really helps because you stay excited about the business when you're being paid in the business and not you know, living on welfare for three years while you're trying to build the business like a college student, a starving college student. Right, Mary? Well, you have to have that skin in the game. One of the things is I find a lot of startups have lots of different ideas. And so I always tell them, write down everything and then go through the list and to, to be honest with yourself about which one of these things is going to make you the most money the fastest. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you do. Then you go down the list and go, which one of these things is going to be the most fun or is going to make me the most yeah. happy. And that's the second thing you do. And you go money, happy, money, happy down your list. Yeah. So I never tell anybody, don't do that. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I love that you said that because, you know, we purchased, I guess, a passion business 
Uh, my husband and I bought the mobile pizzeria business with our kids and we love pizza. And so I don't necessarily um, always have the time to be at events. We have employees that work for us and they go do the work for us. But you're right. You have to, what will make you the money the fastest? And for me, when I have employees, it makes money for this business faster because then now when I can be, when we can say yes to an event doesn't depend on my schedule, right? It's based on, we have employees. So whenever they need it, we're, we're available. If that makes sense. I love that. You know, in our last episode, Mary, that we just had, if they want to go back to episode 104 that we just recorded, uh, she was talking about three buckets and she was talking about the bucket that you love. And then she was talking about the bucket that you're like, eh, it's okay in my business. You know, I don't mind doing it. And then there's the bucket of the things you hate to do. Like you really don't want it. She said, if buckets two and three are fuller than bucket number one, you have opportunity to delegate and automate. And I know you love delegation and automation. How important is that for a startup? It's as extremely important for two reasons. One is you can't really do it all by yourself. And the other is if you want something that's going to scale, you have to be able to defer stuff to skill sets you don't have. Yeah. And it's okay to not be able to do everything. Um, So the type A personalities really need to be able to step back and get real about, I could do this, but I hate it. Mm Mm-hmm. Or I don't want to learn how to do this, but it has to get done. So that's where you go and find someone else to help you with it. Yeah. Yeah. So and even when you're hacking through a problem, I tell people that um, if it takes you more than 10 minutes to figure out how to do something, call for help. Yeah. And if you don't know who to call, call me. Yeah, because you're like the resources queen. I love that. And 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 it's a good timetable to tell someone that. I'm, I'll use an example of things I don't, and maybe you can use an example of things you don't uh, like, but I uh, am not good in Canva. I'll just tell everybody right now. I have taken classes. I've tried to learn, you know, all the things in Canva. It's not my skill set, but I have a part person on my team who loves Canva and can create things in Canva in an instant. And when I sent her some PDFs that I needed rebranded, she rebranded them in the matter of hours and got them back to me. That would have taken me days to try to figure out how to do that and create it. I yeah. just I delegate everything that is in that hate bucket (laughs) that I hate to do, that I don't like to do. So that's good because it would have taken me way longer than 10 minutes. And you bring up a good point. You said you took some classes and stuff. I took a class in how to tune a car, not because I wanted to be able to be my own auto mechanic, but because I wanted to know the terminology and how to talk to auto mechanics. Yeah. And similarly in business. You want to know enough about how a website is built to be able to talk to a developer. You need to know enough about how an app is put together to be able to talk to an app developer or yeah. enough about how you keep your books to be able to know that this bookkeeper is going to be good for you or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so a little bit of, of general knowledge can help you in your delegation process. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some keys and tips for startups, would you say? So there's the basic foundations for someone who's starting up a business that I believe are things you just need to get out of the way right away. Because in the beginning, you have more time than money when you start out, right? So because of that, there are a lot of things that you're probably going to be doing yourself in the very beginning. But I don't necessarily think that that means you should go create a website by yourself, if you want me to be honest. And a website isn't always the first thing you need to make. Yeah. Um, there's the housekeeping parts of things, and then there's the creating your business parts of things. Housekeeping is you have to get an EIN number. You have to have a bank account in a different institution from where your personal stuff is. You have to cover all your legal bases for your company or or whatever you're going to do in whatever state or or province you're doing Mm -hmm. it in. Those kinds of housekeeping things. 
And I actually have a download of how to set up a business legally in 10 steps. Mm, The other side of it is you need to be really clear on what it is you offer, what problem you solve, and for whom. You need to know exactly who your potential customers are. And you need to actually go talk to these people Mm -hmm. and find out not only is this a good idea, But how much are you willing to pay for it? Yeah. So if you don't spend time at the beginning doing that, you'll be spending a lot of time doing development or websites or something that won't make you any money. Right. So I call it uh, when someone is ready, aim, 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 and they never fire right? Firing, when you fire, that means your business is out there. People are hiring you, paying you money for products, right? You're you're promoting yourself. And I see a lot of women stay in the aim, which is the building the website. And then I've got to do this course. And then I want to do this. I'm like, you should have already been out there selling your goods. I have a client that I've literally worked with with for, for four months. We do not have her podcast launched yet. We're in the We're in the process of doing that. We have not launched any of her programs. She does not have a website out there. She is a nurse. She works full time as a nurse. But like many in the medical field, they're tired of the pill pushing and they want to move more to helping people heal their bodies naturally because that's what they want to do. They're tired of it, right? Mm -hmm. She sold a program the other day of a program that she made up because someone wanted to work with her and she created it and started texting me about like, hey, do I have to have refunds? And can I take this this wording from your contract and use it for I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And yes. And no, you never give refunds for stuff like that, not for services that are rendered. And I was like, I'm so proud of you that you sold a program that didn't even exist. You created it for a person. You sold it. And I know you're going to give them even more value than what they paid for this program. It's about going. It's about getting the money. It's about generating revenue and and getting that traction, which Mm -hmm. builds the confidence for the business owner to keep going. Right. Right. Yeah. And sometimes it it really helps to have a business mentor in your corner because there's so much to do at the beginning that you, you can get overwhelmed. And a mentor can help you decide what your priorities are. So today you're going to be spending an hour on this, Mm -hmm. 15 minutes on the next thing, another hour on this, so Mm -hmm. that you get to where you're going in a logical way. Yeah, in a a logical sequence. I love that you said that. Um, And my point of that was you don't have to sit and build all of this on the back end. I've built, you know, I've launched so many programs that I, I was building the plane when I was flying it. <laughs> that makes sense. It wasn't well, ready. I some made it people up. People can you know? do that successfully. Other people yeah. need to m- build some, th- some small plane on the ground and get it in the air. Yeah. And then you can get it to go faster, higher, longer. Yeah. And then build a bigger plane when you have more money. Right. right. To transport you and your family now instead of a little remote yeah. control plane. That's the way I yeah. look at it. So yeah. um, what are some of the talk to me about some of your clients that you've worked with, Mary, uh, and and their successes and and getting these startups, you know, going. What are the resources that you're referring them to? I love that you have that download on your website. I'm going to highly recommend that everybody goes out to businessrift.com and get that download. So you have like those 10 steps that you can take right right away. Um, I think that's brilliant. Uh, What are some other uh, areas? The other things are, um, I meet startups wherever they are. So one guy came to me and was saying, you know, I'm talking to these insurance companies about um, getting verified backups because it'll it'll help them pay fewer claims if their customers who get su- hacked can get back up faster. And I'm talking to these insurance companies and I said to them, okay, why don't you also talk to stockbrokers who have stock in companies that need to be hacked and then follow the the business news about who's been hacked recently 
and talk to their two competitors about how to avoid that. Mm -hmm. So this gave him some additional marketing opportunities that he was very happy to get and talked about how you don't just ask for the business with people, particularly if you've got a friend in the business, you don't just ask for the business. You ask, who do you know that you can Mm -hmm. introduce me to? Or what do you think of this idea? You ask for advice. If you ask for advice from the right people, you Mm -hmm. end up getting money. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that. A lot of startups can get money from investors just because they've gone to somebody who's a potential client Mm -hmm. or a potential investor and just ask them, tell me what you think of this idea. Tell me who I should be talking to. Yeah. And some of these folks go, that is such a great idea. I'm just going to write you this check and then I'm going to introduce you to this. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And I do believe there's a a piece that we have to remember as individuals. One, Dale Carnegie's book on how to win friends and influence people is going to be how you treat other people, right? Their interest. And that's what you're talking about. Like, get interested in them, become valuable for that individual first. I think that's an important piece that's missed. And and I draw it all the way back to kindness. It's about being interested in other people other than yourself. Do you know in 500 phone conversations that they recorded back in the 1930s, the word I was said over 3,900 times. I is everybody's favorite word. Their name is their favorite word by far. And so if we know that, why not use that to our advantage to become valuable to other people first before trying to sell them and leverage that? Yeah, it's always a good idea to find out more about the person you're talking with before you go off about what you can do. Yeah. Because you have no idea initially whether you're, any of your skills can help this person. Mm-hmm. You need to have an idea about who they are, what they're interested in, what's yeah. their issue today, you know, because it's not what I can do. It's what I can do for you. Yeah. Yeah. So like um, I had a gentleman come to my door the other day and I don't ever answer my door. I'm home most of the day. But I don't ever answer my door because I'm constantly back and forth on Zoom and meetings and client meetings. And so I don't want to get stuck at the door if I have to be on a call in five minutes. And I just happened to be walking by that part of my house and the door rang and I was like, oh, I wonder if it's the neighbor. Who knows? I opened up the door. Of course, it was someone trying to sell me on um, on weed control. And I said, oh, we actually have a really amazing company that we met that we've been loyal to since we moved in seven years ago into this community. And they do our pest control and our weeds. They've done an amazing job, as you can tell by looking around out front. He's like, what's the name of the company? And I couldn't remember the company for the life of me. It just skipped my brain. I was like, oh, my gosh, why can't I? I was like, you know what? I really don't know. And I don't want to, like, go to my computer or my phone to try and find it because I don't have my phone. So he just kept going on on and on about his company and what they can do better. But he didn't even know the company that I was loyal to. He was kind of like just just dumping, vomiting, sailing to me. And I said, listen, I'm, I shouldn't have opened my door because I have another call in like 30 seconds and I got a roll and I really appreciate you coming by. Good luck. And I shut the door. And I thought he didn't ask one question to me other than if I had a service already. That's bad sales. I'm sure his sales are super low. He was like, oh, your other neighbors have hired us. I'm like, I don't care. My other neighbors have hired you. What does that have to do with me? I don't, I don't. And how do you know? Maybe, maybe I eat my dandelions. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you, like, if you, if he would have spent some time understanding who I was and more about, made it more about me and not about his company, maybe that conversation would have went different. You just never know, and, right? And sometimes it's really important to know whether someone is not in your wheelhouse. 
Yeah. And you can find out within a few minutes of conversation yeah. whether this person is going to be a good referral partner, mm-hmm. whether this person is a potential client, whether this person might know any potential clients. Yeah. And if if they don't fit any of those boxes, yeah. well, it was nice to meet you and I'll see you again another time and yeah. can move on. Because you can't waste a lot of time with people that really you're not going to be able to help them and you know they're not going to help you. I just say stick to the golden rule, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. Do unto others the way you want others to do unto you. Be valuable. There's so many no's that I've gotten sure. talking to people yeah. and, um, you know, they've showed an interest and wanted to speak to me about hiring me as a sure. business coach. And then it'll come down to, oh, I don't have the money to work with you. That doesn't stop me from connecting them to another business coach. That doesn't right. stop me from right. connecting them to someone they mentioned that they needed a they sure. needed this resource. And I said, I think there's someone that I can get you on their podcast. They're looking for guests right now. Let's get you some more visibility, right? So sure. I become valuable to them and I still do things for them because you never know. I've had someone tell right. me no. And two days later, wrote me an email and said, I woke up in the middle of the night. And I got prompted to do this. And so I'm I'm in. Sign me up. Right. I'm doing it. I'm, you know, right. I'm I'm going for it. So exactly. you never know. And we can't treat people bad because they decide right. not to take our services. Think of a coffee shop you you go to. Think of a store you're loyal to that you shop at or a brand that you buy, uh, whatever that might be. You know, that person's loyal for a reason. They're your customer base. You don't want to treat people horrible just because they don't buy your brand and they have another brand that they're loyal to. And that's fine. Like I'm an Android user. Everybody else I know is pretty much an Apple user. I'm not loyal to that brand at all. Yeah, there's you there's know? room for all kinds. And yeah. they're all there's also an interesting saying that you're not really in business until you've fired a client. Yes. And I like the phrase, when you come to a total impasse, I'm sorry, I don't think I can make you happy. And I think that's okay. Can to say I too. suggest someplace else to go? Mm-hmm. Or Yeah, yeah. I have, I have fire clients and I have let them go. And I have said, I don't think that we are right for each other. And I don't think, and this was not too long ago, actually, um, Mm -hmm. that I remember the last one. And at that same time, the person was saying, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And it's because I already knew what they wanted that I couldn't give them. And Mm -hmm. so in their mind, they were thinking, this person can't give me what I want. Right. And so I don't give people things. That's not what I do as a business coach. You know what I mean? And so uh, you're right. I can't do that for you. And that's not why you hired me. Uh, But that's okay. I think the parting the ways and then still, still after that point, staying valuable to that person because just because it didn't work out for them doesn't mean that they have a bad taste in their mouth. They might turn around and say, oh my gosh, you need to work with Mary Scott. She was amazing, you know, Um, and then they will refer you. Right. But startups also need to know you need people and you need money and you need to be able to um, ask for investments from your friends and family first before you go to strangers. And there are, there's a lot of progression. And yeah. if you've got a business that you're happy with what it is, it's just mm-hmm. you and you're doing this and this is fine. That's a gig, but it's a business and you're not going to scale. And it's okay to be happy just being the one person, mm-hmm. little, little business. If you want to scale, you need to be prepared for a whole lot of other stuff. And if you yeah. haven't, taken a business course or you don't have a good mentor, you can get into a lot of trouble really quickly if you're not prepared for all the stuff that happens when you're when you want to get up yeah. to scale. And some of that has to do with getting a line of credit so that you can buy all the materials you need to produce this product when you've got this big order coming in. I'm glad you said that because 
Uh, building business credit is something you need to do from the get go. Um, I actually taught a course on this uh, not too long ago. And building business credit has to do with getting your DUNS number, getting your CAGE number, uh, making sure that you're registered as a corporation, right, with the IRS, uh, that you have a phone number, that you have a, a page on Google, uh, that you have all these things um, and, an, a, you know, an address for the business. So legit, everything's legit for the yes. business. Yeah. You can start and you have a business bank account. You can start building credit as little as starting with getting a gas card for the gas for your vehicle that you drive to appointments, right? right. To um, getting a IRS. I will tell you, Costco has a business card right. that you can get a Costco business card. And you use your EIN number on yep. those cards as those opposed social to security. your social security mm-hmm. number. I just interviewed Jim Swan, who offered people a free business credit report if you text I love that. something to him. And I can give you that information later. Yeah. So that's really great. Yeah. I absolutely think that's one of the best things. Build business credit now because you never know when you're going to need the extra line of credit to be able to pull it for your business to uh, start up, right. you know, a franchise or start up, you know, or put extra. I I, I don't even know. I probably had $75,000 invested and dumped um, just in the in my business alone in the first year with travel and everywhere I was going and everything right. I was doing and all the money it took to build the websites and everything I had to get done while I was working the business and generating money. Um, Mm -hmm. I still had, you know, invested that amount of money. So it's got to come from somewhere. So start building business credit right away. That's a great tip, uh, Mary. And I think the other tip is don't do it alone. There are so many people like Mary that have so much more experience in business than you do. If it's your first time, tap into mentors. There's a, a lot of local groups as well like SCORE. And uh, I know that you work with your local Small one. business there. development centers. Yep. I always say, okay, every business needs three major team members, whether they're full-time employees or just hangers-on or supporters, whatever. You need a marketing person mm-hmm. who helps you make money. You need an accountant or bookkeeper yeah. who helps you keep most of it. And you have need to have a lawyer or legal services to prevent you from losing it. And I love that. That sounds amazing. That's the one of the best tips that we've had today. And we've given a lot. So Mary, uh, we have a lot of your links listed out here. They can find you on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. Uh, they can go to your YouTube channel for startup advice to get your videos. They can book a free call with you. Uh, where would you like them Uh, to connect with you if they've heard you on this show? If you've heard me on this show, I'd like you to go to startupsuccesslaunch.com. Okay. That's the the great way that that talks about some of my consulting services and lets you sign up for a free call and potentially a free office visit. Okay, great. Yeah, startup success, the startup success. Success launch. Launch, okay. Great. Startup success launch. um, And you can also book a free call with her. We have that link available at the fingertips. And thank you, Mary, so much for being a guest on today's show. You were absolutely fabulous. Thank you for the opportunity. Favorite subject is startups. There's so much that needs to be done in the very beginning. It can be overwhelming. You need a mentor. So reach out to someone like Mary who can walk you through those pieces. Let her be your business concierge uh, in helping you. And you can be wildly successful. Yes, absolutely. You can. And remember, you know, you're the only you that's ever going to be. You're the only you that's ever going to be. So uh, I guess I should just ask you, are you going to stop waiting and start living? Are you going to decide that you want to go ahead and move forward uh, with this type of business and do it already? Like you could die tomorrow, literally. You, uh, I've seen people find one day and then the next day they're sick. They go into a hospital and they don't come out three weeks later. You never know when your life is going. You never know when your life is going to end. Your time is now. Now is the time for you to do this. And there are so many more resources out there today than there ever have been in the past. Just like if you're gluten-free or dairy-free or vegan, there are so many more choices at your fingertips at the grocery store that you can buy. Uh, 
It is that way with starting up a business today. So reach out to Mary Scott. You can go to businessrift.com, uh, schedule a free call with her. Make sure you check her out at Startup Success Launch on YouTube. Uh, connect with her on LinkedIn. Uh, DM her and let her know that you saw her on the show. All right, Mary, thank you so much for being with us. And to all of you, thank you for joining us week after week and making us one of the top percent global podcasts in the world. We love you so much. And for now, bye-bye. And don't forget, be you and be strong. See you later. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.